Saturday morning, Westminster College. Everything is quiet. You can hear the trickle on the creek or the ducks out on the water. But little do some realize that as the fog rolls over Lake Britain and the sun rises over Harold Burry Stadium, nothing but excitement is in store for you. When they throw in, it is intercepted and look out. Westminster may come up with two points. It is intercepted by Lou Barry, and you can forget it. Barry is going to take it all the way. Down play for the Titans. They will pitch it to Andy Blatt. He might throw the halfback pass. He does. He has McNeil wide open. Can he get it? He does. He brings it in. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown to McNeil. And he hands it off to his running back. Good ball. Oh, ball is out. Titans get it. J.J. Nelson has the fumble. He's got blockers in front of him. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, all the way into the end zone. Third and goal from the 17. Makia straight back, good protection. Over the middle, touchdown Westminster. Dave Foley makes the diving catch in the end zone. And the Titans get on the Titans number 29 was with them, Shane Peterson. But Kyle Allen gets the return and he is so dangerous. Into Grove City territory, he's gone at a 20. 10, 5, touchdown Westminster. Oh! Snaps back, balls down, kicks up. It's going in. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Amazing. A touchdown, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Here's Tokar making a cutback, and I think he is gone. He is. A touchdown for Brad Tokar, untouched from 17 yards. Over the years, the Titans have had tons of success. But many Titan fans will tell you of the 88 team and the amazing winning streak that they started. Some would think this is another boys to men story, but not the 88 team. 13 seconds remaining in the contest. Score is all tied up, 14-14. It is fourth down and 10 for the Westminster Titans at the 33 yard line. Osborne lines up to the right, Foley to the left. Degretola and Mike Games in the T formation. Joe McKee, the quarterback. Jeff Hahn lines up on the left side. This is it. McKee, straight job. Going into the end zone for Foley. It's up. The 88 team is a story of men becoming Titans. Since taking over in 72, Coach Joe Fusco had led the Titans to two national championships and a 116-32 and 3 record heading into the 1988 season. And by that season, Coach Fusco was already considered one of Westminster's best. His coaching style, um, it left nothing to question. You knew exactly where he stood, you understood what was uh, to be accomplished, and the expectations were you do the little things right. You don't overlook any of the details. Everything is important. And once you start cutting corners, that's when you make mistakes. Coach Fosco was a great coach. Uh, very meticulous in his preparation. And I know this is an overused term, but he was a perfectionist. Uh, if you were to run a pass pattern 10 yards, you better not run at nine and a half. You better run at ten. Uh, so he was very meticulous and he could be tough at times uh, on us in practice to make sure that we were doing things the right way. And I think that that came through though when then you were in a game situation uh, and the pressure was on. You had done it right so many times in practice and he demanded that perfection of you that you were able to do it in the game. Big game opportunities were about to face the Titans with some extra motivation coming off an early exit in the 87 playoffs. 
It was very disappointing. Uh, I think it was a one-point game. I think it was 16-15 we lost the game. Uh, had a lot of opportunities to win. And I think that was the first time that we had lost to Geneva in over 30 years. So uh, that was certainly disappointing. And the fact that we'd beaten them earlier in the year, I think we felt like we had a better team, but uh, not on that day. So uh, very disappointing for the season to end that way. I know that it, I think it was the first round of the playoffs we had lost to Geneva, which was a, a rival. Um, and um, everybody was devastated, especially those kids that are graduating. Um, but I think kind of knowing and thinking about um, the following seasons, I think we knew we had a pretty decent core group of guys and, and would probably do well the next few years. Going into the season, fans and players alike were excited. Um, I remember kind of looking around and thinking maybe we did have something good. Um, it, it seemed to me like a lot of the class, a lot of my um, group, the sophomore group, uh, a lot of seniors had graduated and I think a lot of my class was going to uh, find some playing time. And when I looked around, um, there were good people at every position. So it was pretty exciting. Well, I thought we had a great team. Uh, I think it was one of those combinations that comes together, you know, where we had some very talented players. We had uh, some playoff experience from the year before. And as I said earlier, I think we had a great coaching staff that had been in the playoffs, had won championships in the past. So it was, uh, it was a good combination, and we knew we could do some great things. Uh, whether we were able to accomplish those, you would just have to wait and see. But we were excited coming into the season. The excitement was justified, and the Titans got off to a good start to the season. Their first game was a 43-14 victory over Franklin in Indiana. And a tough 23-17 victory against a tough Finley team out of Ohio. The Titans then had another close 14-12 victory over the University of Buffalo. Next, the Titans had a 36-3 blowout victory at Adrian College in Michigan. Then finally, the Titans got revenge a 39-0 victory over rival Geneva. The Titans finished the first half of the regular season 5-0. There was no surprise with Finley because we had played them the year before and I think Westminster and Finley had a pretty long history and the games were always difficult, physical, tough games. So playing a, a close, hard-fought game with Finley was no surprise. Uh, anytime you play them, you're happy to get a win, uh, which we did. Buffalo, I don't think we quite played as well as we could. Uh, we kind of had a long bus ride and I think we maybe were a little bit flat, uh, but ultimately we were able to win and I think that's what good teams do. Some, some days you have your best game, some days you don't. But if you're able to still do enough to win the game. Uh, so we felt good to be undefeated. To, to uh, it's always good to beat a rival. Um, it's always good to beat a rival by a lot, too. Um, I, th I think if the tables were turned, they would, they would you know, love to beat us as well. But um, a lot of those guys uh, that were on the Geneva team, a lot of our players had played with them in high school, knew knew some of the people and um, it, it is, it's, it's a good feeling to beat up on, on a rival. So. That was really exciting. It, again, much like Finley I described earlier, Geneva and Westminster have a long history and that was always a big rivalry. Um, two local schools, so a lot of players on our team are from down near that area and people from up here down on their team. Uh, so the players knew each other, the coaches knew each other, the history involved, uh, what had happened the year before when they did upset us. Uh, we were ranked very highly, they were ranked very highly, so there was a lot of build up to that game and it was exciting and I just think we came out really hard and ready to play and I got a big win. 
The game against Geneva certainly was a big victory, but not as big as the game against West Virginia Wesleyan, where Westminster came back from a halftime deficit to win 56-42. Tokar had 100 plus yards and quarterback Joe McKea had 362 yards and 5 touchdowns. Three of those went to Dave Foley and with that victory, the Titans were now the number one team in the land. Yeah, Dave, Dave's a big game receiver. Uh, I think when you, you look back at the tapes and it seemed like whenever you needed a big catch, Dave was the person to make that catch. He had a great game down at West Virginia Wesleyan, you know, and uh, right before halftime, uh, Joe and Dave, I think, connected for a long touchdown pass, which got us close, and then we came out in the second half and it almost looked like a replay. Dave and Joe connected again for a long touchdown pass, uh, which got us right back into the game. So again, uh, I don't think it was our best game, certainly not for our defense, which was a great defense, but we were able to do what we had to do to win. It's kind of a back and forth deal, and, and if I can recall, I think we had some turnovers early on and we got behind. and. Um, I think that game, um, that game propelled us through for the next three years, I believe, because they were, um, we were, we were behind and we were really far behind, and we're able to get the ball, maybe get some good stops on defense, and um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a good game for all of us, I think. Now being ranked number one in the country, the Titans rolled. After West Virginia Wesleyan was Waynesburg, where the Titans prevailed 30 to nothing. Next were the Dragons of Tiffin, where Westminster would get its second straight shutout and win 42 0. <laughs> Buffalo State followed, where the Titans posted 21 points in the second half to win 21 7. And last but not least was Ashland of Ohio. With a perfect regular season at stake, the Titans won 14 to 10. Now the Titans were undefeated and number one heading into the playoffs. I think everybody, that's the goal, you know, you, you don't want to lose any games and um, ha having an undefeated season in anything, uh, if you're playing checkers, being undefeated I think is, is what we all want. I think we want to have, the defense always wanted to have a shutout, we always wanted to run the score up and when you, when you finish 10-0, um, uh, undefeated at any level is impressive and we knew it, we were very pleased and just, you know once once you get a few wins under your belt then you start looking ahead we can win the next game pretty soon you're at the end of the season at 10 and 0 and it's um, it's pretty exciting we were excited you know trying to build up momentum to to get into the playoffs uh, last game of the year was against a very difficult team Ashland University big physical team uh, and that's a situation where our defense played tremendously to, to win that game. I think we won 14-10 and they really shut them down in the second half. So uh, I just think we were coming together as a team. You know, offensively we, w we were uh, played very well and won some games because of the amount of points we scored defensively and other games played great and held teams down and, and that's why we won those games. So again, we were just trying to build momentum, uh, complete one goal which was to be undefeated and uh, work our way into another goal which was the playoffs. Playoff bound, the Titans hit their stride. In the first round, dominating on both sides of the football, Westminster beat Austin College 34-12. Brad Tokar stood out in the Austin College game, running for 161 yards and three touchdowns.
In the quarterfinals, Westminster hosted the Bluffton College Beavers and the Titans blew them out 42-7. Tokar had another 152 yards and was offensive MVP for the second straight week. In the semifinals, Westminster faced another undefeated team in Evangel College in Springfield, Missouri. Behind a dominating defensive effort and a 100-yard two-touchdown day for tight end Jeff Hond, the Titans prevailed 26-9. Next up was Wisconsin Lacrosse in the national championship game. Well, Evangel was a very good team. Uh, I know the, the final score looked as if we maybe had won that game easily, but it was not an easy game at all. I think it was 7-0 at halftime. Uh, very physical game. Uh, again, Joe Makia and we had a tight end. Uh, Jeff Hahn played uh, a very good game there and, and made some key catches for us. But uh, very good team, very physical team. And uh, that was a tough win, but you know we were excited to get it and, and to move on for the championship game. We had made it, but I, I, don't, I don't know that that was the goal. Uh, the goal was to win the, the whole thing. And so I think at that point we were 13-0 and 0, um, heading into the national championship game and really not knowing. Back, in, back at that time, if I can recall, and, and maybe this isn't the correct way it was done, but the, the college bid to have the game. And uh, we didn't know. I don't think we knew maybe until uh, Monday, I guess, uh, where the game was going to be and um, knowing that we had made it that far and then eventually knowing it was going to be a home game uh, is it's kind of an odd thing uh, because when you when you make it that far you think you're going to play at a neutral site and I guess NAI football was different you know than than it is now but uh, yeah the expectations were we're going to come back and, and win the game but I just think it's excitement you know I think that the anticipation the hope um, as we got through the first two rounds, uh, we played pretty well in those games. Uh, Evangel was a, a, a stiffer test for us, but we were able to, to get that. And then you think back a little bit of the history, you know, and, and I, I knew some people that had played on the 1976 and 77 national championship teams, and you, you have a lot of hope and you want to sort of join that fraternity, you know, of people that have won championships. So a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement. December 10th, 1988. Westminster would host the NAIA National Championship, but coming into town was the Wisconsin Lacrosse Indians, who would turn out to be the Titans' toughest matchup. I remember seeing a lot of our own team and their team, a lot of things that they did well, we did well. Um, and um, we, were, we were playing maybe a mirror image of ourselves. They had, a, they had a good quarterback, they had a good running back, their defense swarmed to the ball. Um, they were just, they were an exceptional team as well. Well, we saw a scary team in Wisconsin lacrosse. They were huge. I mean, they, they were so much bigger than we were and, and physical. And uh, we knew we were just going to have to play a, a great game. Um, the atmosphere on the campus was great. You know, I think students were excited. Uh, local media and new, newspapers and, and TV stations were coming to campus. So uh, it was kind of an exciting atmosphere. I think the students were excited. I know the players were excited. Uh, at the same time, nervous because uh, when we did see the opponent we were going to play on film, I mean, they were a great team. And I guess when you're in a championship game, you know you're going to play a great team. But uh, they were physically imposing. The weather in western Pennsylvania is usually bad in December and the Friday before the game it started snowing. On top of that, quarterback Joe Mikia was battling the flu, leaving some doubt if he would even play in the game. That was probably the scariest thing of all. That was scarier than the snow and uh, even scarier than the team we were playing. Joe, Joe's a great player and uh, had been a great player all year and was responsible for a lot of the victories that, that we had, that's for sure. So the thought of going into that game without him was, was very scary. Uh, we had a banquet the night before and he did not even show up to the banquet. 
Uh, he spent the night with our trainer, Sean Toomey, um, to make sure he didn't dehydrate. I know Sean took care of him. He had a high fever. So we didn't know what to expect. Uh, when we got down for the game and saw that he was playing, we were happy, but at the same time didn't know how well he would be able to play. But I think he proved to, to everybody, including the team, uh, that he was able to do it. He did a fantastic job. It added to the lore of the game. Uh, it, it makes it it makes it a little more exciting because it was cold and there was there was a lot of snow. Um, but I don't think any of us thought the weather was going to get in the way of of what we were trying to accomplish. The Titans and the Indians kicked off at 1:30, and the first half would end up being a defensive slugfest with stop after stop for both teams until the Indians struck first with a short touchdown run in the second quarter. Then the Titans, still scoreless, got the ball with just under two minutes left in the second quarter. From there, they executed the two-minute offense in what was called Makia time. Joe Makia was a, he was an outstanding quarterback and I think uh, we lucked out when I, th I think he had transferred in from Youngstown State and was um, he was a big time quarterback, a big time player, and um, he never got rattled. Uh, you, you see NFL games now and you look at calm, cool quarterbacks. He was definitely one of them. And, you know, if he were if he were sacked, hit real hard, um, threw an interception, uh, anything like that, he would be. He would be very focused on, on what needed done. Uh, the two-minute two minute offense, yeah, when I look at it now, a lot of teams run that all, all game, and, and maybe we would have scored 100 points if we would have done that. But, uh, um, yeah, he was pretty cool and kept us in line, and um, I don't know if any of us stepped in the huddle saying it was Makia time, but we knew that um, we were pretty confident that he can get rid of the ball and move us down the field. Yeah, again, I just think Joe was a great pressure player. Um, Dr. McTaggart was the PA announcer, uh, and he had written a book about that season, and I think he's the one that coined that phrase, Makia time, because it seemed like uh, late in the half or late in the game when we needed to score, Joe always came through, and he did it again, you know, uh, when we were trailing at that point in the game and time was running out, and uh, he just took us on a drive all the way down the field and again hit Dave Foley uh, for, for a touchdown. With 16 seconds left, the Titans tied the game when Joe Makia hooked up with wide receiver Dave Foley for the touchdown. 17, Makia straight back, good protection, over the middle, touchdown Westminster! Dave Foley makes the diving catch in the end zone, and the Titans get on the board. Westminster went into halftime, tied 7-7. Well, we were happy to be tied, but at the same time, I felt like uh, the, they had controlled the play, pretty much. Uh, they, they were running the ball early, and they were able to move the ball on us. We were having trouble moving the ball at times. So happy to be tied, uh, but concerned for the second half. I knew that we had to make some adjustments and play better. Uh, it, was a, it was a very tough half. and. Um, I think going into the locker room, we, we assumed we were going to win. Yeah, side up 7-7, seven, seven, I guess. Um, yeah, it was, I don't know that it really anything stands out to me about halftime of the game. Um, I, I think um, our coaching staff was very good at making adjustments at halftime. And if they saw something that needed fixed, um, they were good at kind of redirecting us and, and getting us um, to a, to a position where we'd be successful. The crowd, the players trying to get the crowd into this game. It is all tied up seven to seven. And we're set for the second half of football. The second half was similar to the first half. A defensive slugfest going back and forth. In the backfield behind Reen. Pass play left side. He's got pressure. He's going to be sacked by Todd Fedor. Fumble on the play. And the Titans recover at their own 45-yard line. Ball is at the Titan 40-yard line. Reen to throw. Plenty of time over the middle. Nobody will be there. It's finally in intercepted by Jeff Catanzar. And he hauls it in at about the Titan 20-yard line. The Titans will take over on the turnover. Reen trying to go to run. The third quarter was scoreless until a Joe McKeough fumble gave the Indians first and goal on the Titan four-yard line. The ball and lacrosse 
will come up with it, I believe, inside the Titan five-yard line. Then, with 37 seconds left in the third quarter, Wisconsin lacrosse pounded the rock into the end zone and went up 14-7. The first thing you do is you look and see how much time's left in the game and how much time we have. Um, but we, we really hadn't trailed many times during the year, so uh, that was a new experience for, I think, our team. So it's certainly nervous, uh, but at the same time, you have confidence in your team, uh, certainly have confidence in our quarterback, and we did have time in the game. So you don't panic. Uh, you just try to put into play the adjustments you did make at halftime and, and uh, hopefully even things up. I don't know how many times during the season we were ever behind, but like I said before, with some of those close games and coming out on top, nobody panicked. Nobody panicked. We knew that we could score. We knew that we would get it together. We knew somebody would make a big play when the opportunity came up. And um, I don't think, I think when you're in the thick of it, you think, okay, they scored. Okay, it's our turn to have the ball. Let's go do the same thing. Most of the fourth quarter was scoreless and fans disheartened were wondering what the Titans could do. But with under four minutes left in the game, the Titans were able to tie it up 14-14 with three minutes and 35 seconds left in the clock. Job. Has pressure across for Foley. Five, touchdown Westminster. Dave Foley on the slant pattern. Catches the 21-yard touchdown pass from Joe Makia. The Titans are one point away from tying the ball game. And geez, I remember that the play where Joe again hit Dave Foley and I don't even know how he saw him because when he threw the ball he was nailed and it almost seemed like he threw it blind but then he hit Dave right in stride and uh, scored a touchdown. So again, it's excitement that you've tied the game. Uh, immediately you want to know how much time is left, uh, what, what's going to happen and at that time there wasn't overtime. So if you finish tied 14-14, you're co-champs, which I don't know if anybody would have been real happy with, so uh, uh, you, you just hope there's time for you to, to come down and win the game. Once we tied it up, um, the thought was, you know, we've got to get the ball back to do it again. The, the expectation was we could win, and if, if two minutes was Makia time or, or whatever we called, we had three and a half minutes to go, so it, it, we could score. Green to throw, pass pressure. All the Titans needed was a three and out, and that's exactly what the defense did, forcing the Indians to punt and give them the ball back to the offense on the 15 with just two minutes and 38 seconds left. Well, I would first say that our defense did a tremendous job. You know, I mean, after we tied the game in Wisconsin lacrosse, I'm sure we're thinking that the same thoughts we were about, okay, we have time to go down and try to win this game, and our defense just stopped them and did, did a, a great job. So when we got out into the huddle, um, again, you know, we just kind of conducted our business. Joe was very calm under pressure, just got in the huddle and said, you know, we know we can do this. We've done it how many times in practice? It's time to go to work. Um, no yelling, no screaming, no, no anything like that. It was just kind of uh, an even keeled business approach to it. Whatever was left on the clock, was that was plenty of time to get the ball down the field. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think, I think we had a couple close calls, like where it was maybe third and 10, third and 15, or fourth down even. I think we may have converted a couple fourth downs uh, too. And um, I, I don't know, when I think about it as an adult, I might have been more nervous when I look back, but um, when, you're, when you're there, not that you aren't an adult while you're in college, but mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're there and, in, and you're in the, th in the thick of it, you don't really, think that much about it. I think uh, the, the thought was we were going to score. Westminster was just about to start a drive for the ages. The thought that was going through my mind is because we, can we get close enough to kick a field goal? Uh, and, and possibly win the game 17-14. So you're right, uh, Joe converted some, some long third downs, uh, which <laughs> were nerve-wracking, to, to say the least, you know, because we didn't want to have to turn the ball back over to Wisconsin lacrosse. 
Um, but that's kind of my mindset, you know, can we get close enough to kick a field goal and win the game? Uh, and when he converted those third downs, we thought we had a chance to do that. Seven yard line, Hahn stays in bounds, the clock to a minute one now. Right side, Di Grotola, the long man in the backfield, gets the call, he's out over the 50, has the first down and more. He's out in the Wisconsin lacrosse territory to the 45 yard line. Straight drop in the pocket, has pressure, fires across the middle, Mike Games complete! Another first down, he loses the ball. Now, down to the 33 yard line of the Indians. Westminster was faced with a fourth and ten with just 13 seconds left in the game. Well, we had called timeout prior to that and we were in the huddle. Uh, we always huddled on the sidelines and I remember Coach Fosco was in the huddle. And again, my mind, I'm thinking, okay, it's fourth down, but we can throw a pass, get a first down, that would stop the clock, uh, and then we could potentially kick a field goal. And our coach called what was, was basically a nine throwback, which is pretty much an all or nothing. We're, we're going for the touchdown. Fourth and long, I think everybody knew we were going to throw. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the one play that we had that was pretty successful throughout the year was this 96 throwback. A nine is just kind of a streak route down the, down the sideline. Six meant the other guy was going to do like a, a dig route and, uh, 10, 15 yard in. And um, uh, the quarterback rolls to the right to try to get the defense to move to the right. As he did that, um, uh, the corner that was playing in front of me took one step inside. And as soon as he took a step inside, I was able to kind of get on his outside shoulder. And um, the 9 6 throwback would be the call for the most memorable play in Titan football history. 13 seconds remaining in the contest. Score is all tied up, 14-14. It is fourth down and 10 for the Westminster Titans at the 33-yard line. Osborne lines up to the right, Foley to the left. DeGratola and Mike Games in the T formation. Joe McKee, the quarterback. Jeff Hahn lines up on the left side. This is it. Makia, straight drop, going into the end zone for Foley, it's up, touchdown Westminster, the Titans have won it, seven seconds remaining, the Westminster Titans are the national champions. The Titans took the lead for good, 21-14, with just seven seconds left. And when those seven seconds ticked off the clock, your Westminster Titans were NAIA Division II national champions. Oh, unbelievable! Every fan is out on the field! Um, I, there, were, there was a couple plays prior to that where um, I was able to get behind uh, this same defensive back and the ball was overthrown. Uh -huh. And I remember thinking, boy, if I, that could have been it. I could have had it and we could have, we could have won. During the timeout, Joe DiGratola, who was our fullback at the time, came over and kind of whispered in my ear, you better get it. And um, I, I don't know that I thought much about it, but I, you know, I was able to kind of pull myself together, get back out there on the field, and, and um, I was able to get behind the guy. The official's arms go up, it was just jubilation. You know, it was hard to believe uh, uh, and, and very exciting. So, and just to, to make that kind of throw, uh, that Joe did in those conditions, you know, in a cold, wet, windy, snowy, uh, and to make that kind of catch that, that Dave made was just phenomenal. When I caught it, um, I kind of rolled over to the side, and at that point, it, there used to be uh, a rope around the back, and people would stand all along that rope, and as soon as I, I got the ball in my hands, people jumped, on, jumped over that rope and jumped on me. <laughs> You, you don't, I didn't want to get undressed. Uh, I was just in my uniform and just sort of sharing that experience with your teammates and your coaches and uh, it was exciting. But I think that it almost takes a day or so to really sink in, you know, in your division you're the best team in the country. Uh, and it does, it, it, it takes some time to, for the, to really digest that. It was fun. That was, um, it was a fun, it was a fun season and that game in particular because everybody was all over the field and uh, to win it on your home field is it's exciting.
Well, you know, the interesting thing was the next week was finals. So uh, we had a lot of fun that weekend. You know, we enjoyed the moment uh, and, and celebrated together. I know that Saturday and even in, into Sunday. Uh, and then Monday it was kind of back to work, you know, and that was our approach. And the coach's approach was, you know, uh, now you have finals coming up uh, and you have to take care of your business, uh, enjoy it, but uh, it's, it's time to move on. So that was really our, I think it was an excitement around campus uh, and you sensed it with the professors, the faculty, and the student body. But, uh, you know, we just kind of went back, right back to business because uh, I think that's what our coaches demanded of us. And I, that team, uh, that group of guys, and, and I'd be willing to bet that, that many of them are successful in wherever, they're, wherever their jobs have taken them. Um, and I think it's a result of, of having the confidence that, you know, I can do this. I can, I can, I can beat the person in front of me and as, as a result. You know, if the guy next to me is beating the person in front of him, pretty soon you're moving the ball down the field, you're scoring lots of points, and you're winning. It, it's like I said from the beginning, though. I don't think any of us thought we weren't going to win that game. I think everybody, we're Westminster, you step on the field, you win the game. That's what we do. So. Titans try to tie this thing up. Pokar with it. Pokar. Pokar with a touchdown. He really took a hit at the goal line. Supporter. Makia, play action. Still looking. He's got a man and he has a touchdown for Westminster. The Titans